In our second reading, St. Paul has his beautiful treatise on love, and we hear that probably at almost every wedding, right? And rightfully so, because it's such a poetic and beautiful sort of unpacking of what love is in, uh, in, in the life of a Christian. There's a really interesting phrase, almost the entire thing is a, again, that sort of a poetic uh, take on love. At the beginning, there's one phrase at the very beginning of the reading that kind of stands out and, and, and is related, but it's, yet it doesn't quite fit to the rest of it. And that is, St. Paul begins by saying, strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gifts. Strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gifts. The interesting thing about that is that I think that we, we obviously, a lot of times, we, again, we skip over that because then he dives into to the idea of the topic of love. But what, is that, what does that phrase mean? Strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gifts. And I think a good question to ask is, what are the greatest spiritual gifts? St. Paul is implying that there are lots of spiritual gifts, but not all of them are the greatest so there must be then, amongst the spiritual gifts that God gives to us, there must be a hierarchy of um, in among the gifts that God has poured out upon us. And what we believe as Catholics is that the sacraments, the seven sacraments of our church, central, central to the seven sacraments being the Eucharist, what we're here celebrating and receiving today, that the seven sacraments are God's greatest spiritual gifts that he has given to us because they are, in fact, God's grace itself and his son and the real presence of his son. So the sacraments then, St. Paul is saying, strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gifts. We believe and understand that to mean that St. Paul is encouraging us to strive eagerly for the sacraments, for the grace that comes to us, particularly in the sacraments. What are the lesser spiritual gifts then? And we believe as Catholics, again, there that we're talking about the sacramentals with an ALS on the end. The things that are not sacraments themselves, but are nonetheless gifts of God that help focus and point us to the sacraments. And there are literally thousands of sacramentals, holy water, scriptures, prayers, rosaries, divine mercy, medals, saints, images, all these sorts of things, anything basically in our life that orients and points us to the greatest spiritual gifts, which are the sacraments. And we have, again, so we have like a buffet, thousands and thousands of things that are sacramentals that help us. And I think sometimes we we can admit that we can be as Catholics, sometimes we can be overly focused on the sacramentals themselves, and, and we sometimes lose sight of what it is that they are pointing us towards, which is the sacraments. Every sacramental in your life should be helping focus and point you toward the greatest spiritual gifts, which are the sacraments. So as we think about the sacramentals, one thing that I would like to say today and kind of talk about, and I'm going to be talking about it more at the, the Tapping Into Theology on Tuesday, the best, the premier, if you will, among the sacramentals is something that a lot of us maybe have heard referenced, but we may not have a lot of experience with them, and that is called the Liturgy of the Hours. You may have heard a phrase, lauds, or morning prayer, or vespers, or evening prayer, or the office of readings, or whatever. All these different types of things are all referring to one thing, which is the universal prayer of the church. It is something that men and women who are priests, nuns, brothers, monks, are literally praying all throughout the day, sometimes gathering, sometimes pausing right in the midst of what they're doing to go and pray in the morning when they first wake up, in the middle of the day, at the end of the day, at night prayer. All throughout the day, there's this rhythm in the church, is prayer called the liturgy of the hours. And it's something that all of us can pray. Again, we, those who are ordained or consecrated um, are required. It's part of our vows that we make that we will pray this liturgy of the hours throughout the day. And it is considered to be one of the preeminent um, sacramental that sort of leads us to the Eucharist and leads us to Mass, the greatest of our spiritual gifts. So on Tuesday uh, at, at Mario Brothers, we'll be talking a little bit, about, a little bit more about that and expanding upon it and, and, and helping us understand um, how to pray the Liturgy of the Hours. If you can't make it, we'll be recording that. 
so that you can participate and, and maybe learn a little bit more about that. That'll be something that we're doing throughout the season of Lent. Lent is coming. It's 10 days away. And, um, and, and it's one of the things that we want to be doing that, that I'm going to be offering here at the parish a half hour before each of our daily masses. We will have one of the, one of the liturgy of the hours that we'll be praying. So if it's in the morning, masses in the morning, we'll pray morning prayer. If masses in the evening, we'll pray evening prayer. But just helping us learn a little bit more about one of those sacramentals that really is geared towards the greatest of the spiritual gifts, which is the Mass and the sacraments. In addition to that, so you'll have an opportunity to, we can look at that a little bit more on Tuesday evening. But another then, and as we think about the spiritual gifts, the greatest spiritual gifts, my challenge to you during Lent as well is to focus and to do exactly what St. Paul says, which is to strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gifts. One of the things that I'm inviting you to think about is making the greatest spiritual gifts, the sacraments, a part of your Lent in a new way. You know, making maybe, so that's, if I think of the, if I think of the sacrament of the Eucharist, how can I make mass or adoration or something that gears me towards the Eucharist, how can I make that a part of my Lent as well? Maybe it's going to a daily mass that I don't normally uh, make time for in my week. Maybe I will st strive to go to and add a daily mass to my calendar once a week. Or maybe some time in adoration or stopping by the church just to pray in adoration, even though we may not have the Blessed Sacrament exposed. Um, participating in some way in these sorts of things. And I think another of the greatest spiritual gifts, another, obviously another of the sacraments, is confession. And we will be having lots of opportunities for confession uh, for people who want to make the sacraments a focus of their Lent. Um, we will have every, um, every Wednesday evening, we will have confession here after RCIA from 7.30 to 9. There, Pope Francis has actually asked that we have 24 hours of confession in all of our churches. And so Pope Francis's uh, thought there is that every parish has multiple priests. So um, I'll be writing him a letter of complaint. Uh, no, uh, the, uh, so what we're going to be doing is having 12 hours here and then a few days later, 12 hours in Greencastle. So when you add it all up, Holy Father, there will be 24 hours of confession. No, but we'll have that. Uh, we'll have our regular penance service that we always have where, you know, if you don't want to come and talk to me about your sins, then you can talk to someone else who you'll never see again, another priest. Um, but we'll have our penance service. There's going to be tons of opportunities to take advantage of the sacrament of confession as well, another of the greatest spiritual gifts. So as we think about St. Paul's exhortation then to strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gifts, are your sacramental practices in your life, are they orienting you towards that? Do you understand and think of the sacraments as the greatest of the spiritual gifts that God has given to us? And maybe spending some time in prayer today about how will the Lenten practices that you undertake help gear you and orient you towards what St. Paul is reminding us are the greatest of the spiritual gifts.